Hey NASA Hack Founders, my name is Christy Chafee, I'm a Cloud Product Manager, and today I'll be talking to you about how to break down your scope for this year's Space Apps Hackathon. Just a reminder, this year's hackathon is a virtual 48-hour hackathon, so get your teams ready and make sure to watch these bootcamp videos to best prepare for this year's hackathon. When we break down our scope, we include everybody on our hackathon team. We do this so everybody has an aligned vision and common understanding of the goals we're trying to achieve. You only have 48 hours to get your work done, so doing this in an agile way is very important. As we break our work down, we'll see which priority order the work needs to get done and what stories equal a complete product or value feature. Having an aligned vision and goal for what you're trying to achieve empowers the team and gives everybody work to do right away. This is important when you only have 48 hours. Because we're virtual this year, make sure to use the tools that are provided to you. You should have a chat room where everybody in your hackathon team can collaborate. Look online for virtual whiteboards that you can use as collaboration tools. And if you can't find something online, pull out your sticky notes. They'll still work today. So let's get busy talking about the basics of how to break down your work. Today we're going to talk about four different work types. Each of these work types can go by multiple different names, but today we're going to use goals, epics, stories, and tasks. Remember, planning up front saves time later. And we want to add as much detail as we can into each one of these work types so we have a complete story and picture by the end. Our goal is to have about 70% of our work identified before we start development. There's always going to be some work we can't identify until we get into our actual building of our product, but we'll hope to get as much as we can ahead of time. When you picked a hackathon challenge, your goal has likely already been picked and written out for you, but let's make sure it has the details you need to refine the work further. Our goals are the highest level of work that we'll manage. This is going to be either one or just a few goals that you'll look to achieve during a hackathon period. We want to make sure this goal is specific so you know what work needs to be rolled up under it. Our example that I'll use today is I want to build a phone app that tells me the likelihood of seeing the moon at any given night. What I'm going to do is make sure my goal goes from I want to see the moon to I want to build an iPhone app that tells me if I'll be able to see the moon to I want to build an iPhone app that combines both the weather for today and the moon rise and moon set time and gives me a percentage of the likelihood that I will see the moon. As you can see, the more details we add in our goal, it is a better picture of what work falls beneath it. So make sure before you get started to as a team, add as many specifics and information you can to your goal so that it's a clear picture on what you're trying to achieve. our second work type that we are going to talk about. What we need to do is take our goal and start dividing it into different value streams or features that we'll deliver. We will manage these as our epics. What's important about epics is we want to think about adding details as a work inception. What this means is we want to think of all the work we have to do in multiple different ways. So the requirements we want to capture are our functional, non-functional, our customer journeys, and the different technologies and skill sets we'll need for that epic to be delivered. We want to focus on the why we're building this epic, the what we're building it for, and the how we're going to build it. When we go to our example about building an iPhone app to tell if the moon will be out, we start thinking about our epics in a few different ways. We'll want to capture our UI and our UX epics. We want to know what the user will be looking at and how the journey and their experience will be as they navigate the app. We know we need to learn about the moonrise and moonset, so we'll make that its own epic. We'll also know that the weather has to fall into its own epic so we can bring the two together. 
We'll look, think about adding a few extra epics to manage our integration work and possibly add one for an AI capability that we'll have as a nice to have or maybe a future release. User stories are the third work type we're going to talk about. Now, what's important about user stories is we want to get these right because this is the work that will get assigned to a developer or an analyst when they're actually going to develop the product. Traditionally, we write a story in this format, as a blank, I want to blank, so that blank. Now, this isn't just about writing our stories consistently. What we're trying to do is make sure our brain has thought about all the different ways a story needs to be written so that we achieve the goal of the epic or a feature. We're trying to make sure we know who's getting a feature delivered, what it is that they need, and what are they looking to achieve by having that feature. When we give an engineer this level of detail, they can then translate that information into technical tasks that they'll execute to get the work done. What we'll be sure is to break down our epics with as many user stories as necessary to represent the goals that we set forth and the requirements that we captured when we wrote our epics. In our example, we'll talk about, as an iPhone user, I want to see a home screen app logo so that I know where to click in to see my Moon app. Now, we'll put this story under a UI UX feature so that those engineers know they need to make that logo from the App Store appear on the home screen when someone downloads the app. What we'll try to do is review these stories together before anybody moves on to development so that any questions teams have or any additional requirements or refinements that need to go into the stories are captured before engineers or developers get started on their work. Are the last work type we'll talk about, and this is critically important for an engineer and developer because this is where all the technical requirements go in for what needs to be achieved. Now, to write these tasks correctly, we usually break out in small groups or individually to first start writing the draft of how these work. We'll review together or with an engineering lead to make sure all the necessary details are captured. It's also critical if you're doing integration work you have the integration details at the task level. An engineer can then complete all the tasks necessary to do a story and close the story. The engineer refers back to the story and the epic if needed if he doesn't have enough information to do the task. Now, what's important is that as we're executing our work, we want to make sure we're doing it in a way that leads to the best chance of a success during a hackathon. So after the engineer tasks are written, it's re recommended you go ahead and put them on a Kanban board. This Kanban board is essentially just a three-stage board where you keep track of the work that's being completed. We often use sticky notes or other collaboration tools to keep track of this work. What you'll expect to see is in the beginning, all of our work is in an open state, which means nobody has picked it up or started it. At that time, Anybody who picks up a story will move it to in progress. What's critical about this work stage is that we want to have as few stories in progress as possible. Multitasking will slow you down, especially when you only have 48 hours. So if you pick up a task, pick it up to complete it, and then move it to the done stage. As you move stories across the board and get your work completed, it will be very clear what work is in progress, completed, and what's left. When you start getting down to the wire, you can look at all your open stories and prioritize which one needs to be picked up. When you use Kanban to get your tasks executed, it's also possible for others to help anybody who needs extra support. So if there's technologies and good requirements listed in each one of these tasks, Anybody on the team with the right skill set should be able to pick up the work. So good luck this year, hackathoners at the Space Apps Hackathon. I hope you break down your work quickly and with lots of detail before you get started. It should surely help you uh, stay on track and get your goals achieved.